So you want to order baby chicks through the mail? Here's what to expect and everything you're going to need for day one. First of all, let's go pick them up. So when you order baby chicks in the mail, they don't get delivered directly to your doorstep. You're gonna wait for a call from your local post office and then you go and you pick them up. The reason the baby chicks can be shipped through the mail is they're shipped on the day that they are hatched and the baby chick can survive up to three days off of the yolk in the egg. That's their food reserves. They don't need any food or any water and they live off the yolk and that's how they're able to be shipped to you from day one. In nature, when the broody hen hatches her egg, they don't all hatch at the same time. So the reason this yolk reserve comes into play is that while all of the brothers and sisters are hatching around them, the baby chick can survive off that reserve while the hen is waiting for all of her other eggs to hatch. And then she'll take them out to forage for the first time. She'll be mama hen today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's make sure everyone's okay. Everyone's good. Oh, good. Okay, now let's let's get them home. Let's get them some water and food, and most importantly, heat. We set this up the night before so it was ready. So when we got the call to go pick them up, that we could just put them right in here. So you're gonna need one a brooder. It could be a bath tub some people use a pool we use a tote some people have like a rabbit hutch you're gonna need something to contain the chicks so we have a really large tote right here and then we have check out our last video we set up we'll also link in the description how to make this so you can have the cleanest brooder ever and then for number two you're going to need bedding we use pine shavings do not use cedar shavings cedar fumes are toxic to chickens it's bad for the respiratory system so use pine shavings or some people on the first days of their chicks use puppy pads or paper towels because it's good traction for their legs. When they're newborns, their legs, they can get spayed and they're, they're still developing the muscles. So make sure you have something where they have good traction and they're not slipping around to prevent spayed legs. So we like paint shavings. Number three, you're going to need water. So we have here a quail waterer. We find that the quail waterer works the best because it prevents the baby chicks from drowning or falling in the water. Some people use larger waterers and fill marbles with it. Perfect for baby chicks. On the first few days, I use the save chick vitamins and electrolytes. It gives them that extra boost because they're going under a lot of shipping stress. So you can use this or I have save chick probiotic. These are some additives you can add to the water because they have been under a lot of stress being shipped. Number four, food. I like to use this kind of feeder when they're very young and then we'll upgrade to a larger feeder as they grow up. But you want to have your food, water, ready for them to go. We use like a mash or a crumble when they're very young because I find it's easier for them to eat. Chick starter crumbles or chick starter mash. And then number five, the most important, they need heat. We use here a heat lamp. And there are some dangers with this. You want to be very careful, make sure it's very secured. We have, our little hack is we use this two by four wedge shear. It's a two, two by two. A two by two wedge shear and it holds onto it great. And I've been raising baby chicks for a very long time. So I pretty much know how much heat they need. You can use a thermometer and place it in the bedding if you want to make sure. But at their very first week of life, they need to be 100 to 95 degrees. And then every week of life, after that, you subtract five degrees. So the first week, 95. Second week, 90 degrees. So the baby chicks will tell you how much heat they need. If they're all piled up together, then that means that they're too cold. If they're spread as far away from the lamp, that means they're too hot. So just as necessary where you need your lamp. And they also sell a much safer option if you're afraid of using a heat lamp, a radiant heater, heating plates. So that's a really safe, great option you can look for too. The danger with the heat lamp lies is if it can fall and start a fire. It is safer with baby chicks because they cannot fly yet. But once they can develop wings or if they're larger birds and the birds can fly into the heat lamp, unsecure it and it could fall into the bedding or God forbid the bird and start a fire, 
Make sure that your heat lamp is properly secured and don't use it with flying animals that can fly their bodies rocketing into it where it could fall. <laughs> right? Is that true, Serge? Now I'm going to show you the proper way to welcome them into their new home. The most important thing you want to do is they've never had food or water before ever in their life so they don't know what it is. So when you take them out of the box, dip their beak in the water so they know about it. Oh, there she goes, she swallowed. Yep. Hey. And then monkey see, monkey do, as the others see the other ones drinking, they'll all understand. Yep, this one's drinking. And this little frame with the hardware cloth, make sure no shavings are in the water. So with this, no more cleaning out shavings in your water. Make sure that you have the time to keep monitoring them because you want to make sure everything's okay and keep your eye out for Pacey Butt that there's no poop blocking them from defecating. Keep your eyes peeled for that video coming out soon on what to do if that happens. So this is everything you're gonna need on day one. In the next few weeks, once you start letting them play outside or introducing different treats and veggies, you're gonna need to have chick grit for them. But when they're on mash or crumble, they don't need this, not until other treats. And once they start getting wing feathers, you're gonna need to makeshift some sort of lid. So we put this on the brooder so they can't fly out. Hope you found this video helpful if you're ordering chicks through the mail or picking them up at your local feed store. If you wanna see how to build this frame to keep your brooder as clean as possible, Watch this video right here, and while you're at it, subscribe so you can keep up with our weekly uploads. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.